Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. We got CA here. And he is an evolutionist, a, cre a, a theistic evolutionist. See? Would you like to uh, state your uh, position on uh, what Brenda has said here? Si, mucho bueno, señor. Ah. Uh, so, I mean, I only heard like a little bit before I came in here, but I'm trying to still. Yeah, I'm pretty. Much, what uh, Brad, hold on, what I Brenda think, is saying. Uh, I, I think it's uh, absurd. Uh, well, she's, well, I want to hear what Brenda has yeah. to say first. Yeah, I'll, I'll well, at least it. explain the case, if not for a brief summary. Yeah, go ahead. What? My well, brief summary was yeah. was that um, on on account of the theory of evolution, there's no reason there's no reason to believe in in a in a god, and moreover, if there is a god who interferes in, in the uh, natural order of things, you mm -hmm. can't have science because any kind of miraculous intervention by a supernatural deity would would completely undermine the scientific method. Okay. So this doesn't seem to be a problem, uh, even though he wasn't a theist himself. Or, uh, Charles Darwin seemed to have no problem with that as a concept when the theory of evolution had first um, been studied with the whole thing with the finches and writing of the book of the origins of life. Um, this wasn't a problem for his uh, one of his colleagues and associates, uh, Asa Gray, who was a Christian and said that basically Darwin had discovered the blueprint for how God created. And he was still a scientist and was, if I remember correctly, of his particular field was a, a I forgot what the term of plant biologist uh, is. It's been a while since I've been in college and that's when I've studied the uh, different sizes of biology the most whenever I have my biology courses. Um, then you have for today, people like Dr. Francis Collins, who was the guy that worked on the Human Genome Project for f several years, and it was a very big discovery in mapping out the entire human genome. And he's a theistic evolutionist and believes that God was behind the process of evolution, but he's still a scientist and says that there were many people that held to, you know, the theistic view of science, especially during the early rises of such. And he knows, and he notes, notes it in his book, The Language of God, which is also now f available for free on the PDF file. So to, to me, the idea that you have to pick and choose that if, if science exists, or especially the theory of evolution exists, then that eliminates God. I, I just don't even see how that is logically possible to just simply make that conclusion and believe that. Because the premises of uh, theistic evolution are incoherent. The theistic part... Uh, so? the, theist, the theistic part denotes a creator mm -hmm. who knows what he wants to do and does it. Mm -hmm. And the evolution part connotes a process that right. is random and doesn't have any need for any supervision by a conscious agent because it is sufficient unto itself. So well, we, we might we, we could rephrase we could rephrase theistic evolution to be a system where God creates using a process he cannot influence in any way and which mm -hmm. has no need of him. That's just nonsense. Well, that's not science. science. Yeah, but the, here's the thing: when I've studied, I mean, because the the process of evolution is natural. random. Yeah, it's but random. But, yeah, so but God can't okay. interve intervene. Okay, that's the so, point. Yeah, but here's the thing: I think you have a misinterpretation of what they mean by the concept of random, because when I've tried to introduce this topic to the people at my church in an apologetics course, the one thing that a scientist notes is that there is a common misconception by what they mean by the random process in which it just simply means uh, random purposelessness. No, it just simply means the something that is just unpredictable. That's all it simply means. And there, it sometimes is unpredictable unless we're able to figure out the puzzle pieces, which is where we have the fossil record to determine where at one point the common ancestor of such a being comes in. But even then, there could be still intermediaries between those specific uh, fossil records and the line that we haven't discovered yet. 
And so it's just simply that's what it means by random is that it's unpredictable, which still poses no problem to the idea of there being a God in the hypothesis because we believe that with God, there are things that are just simply unpredictable. Only he knows. So you're saying that it's random in the way that rolling dice is random. We we don't know the outcome mm-hmm. of rolling the dice because we don't know um, mm-hmm. to to the degree necessary. But if we did know um, all the um, the uh, the momentum and, and all the physical forces at work on a pair of dice, we could predict every single time which, mm-hmm. uh, given the initial conditions, which uh, which face would would show would be facing up right so you mean random in that sense that we simply uh are are, are, we we call rolling dice random because it's Mm -hmm. we we don't know the initial conditions to the degree that we can predict it is Is that what you mean by random yeah this is exactly how ard lewis a physicist has mentioned how the concept of random is similar in the process of evolution right so if if that's what you mean by random i don't see how that helps you any because you still have just physical forces at work, not God. No, because God can work through these physical forces and what they seem natural to us from a, philosoph- from a philosophical framework for the Christian is a theistic that is showing that God is behind these things. In fact, the Bible itself mentions in Proverbs that while we roll the dice, the lot is casted into the lap, but it's been determined what will occur by God. Well, um, so then you're just undermining all of science then. No, I'm not. And I don't think any yeah, other are. scientist in the field you just is did. doing so either. You just did because you said that you said that God can um, interfere mm-hmm. in, in physical processes that are at, at that are more fundamental. But you're say saying that. that God is more yes, you you just that's what you just said. It's so mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, not what I said. Hey, would you... Here, here's, what, here's what I'm saying. So, so if, if I know... everything, everything that we see that occurs, the, the, when we're making the science an observation, it only, we only get those results because we're seeing basically the work of God and the whole thing. It doesn't mean that so far we're undermining science. We're just simply, as some of the early scientists that did have a theistic framework in mind, is seeing, as even as Asa Gray had pointed out with evolution, yeah. the blueprint and the uh, as they would say, also the footprints of God's handiwork, basically. That's what it is. But if, if rather you are a theist, but that's not or, evolution. Or non-theist, what you're describing you, isn't evolution. Well, you can believe that, but no, that's just a fact. According to who? According to evolution. According to every scientist, the evolutionist on the face of the earth right now. Well, I, I quoted one earlier, Francis Collins. Yeah, that's knows, just an argument from. Book. That's just an argument from authority. Well, you're but, just making yeah. the same thing by saying no, I'm not. it's based on I'm the science. I'm citing the science. science. I'm citing the science. science. Yeah, but that's, an, but that's exactly an argument to authority, thing. though, since that's you're not simply saying the science because you mentioned those who are also scientists that are studying in the I, field. I'm, I'm saying that's what the theory, the theory of, of evolution through um, natural selection, um, genetic mm-hmm. drift, and, and, I, and other processes – is is entirely random but it does not say anything about the mention of god and in fact when i was first no it doesn't it, need it hold on when i was first introduced to this in high school that it makes no statements about any concept of the debate on religion that there's no mention That's of true. god and neither is there a negation of the need of god as even darwin himself the people the person who discovered the theory uh that's just an argument from authority again. Again, not not similar. It's similar to what you had did earlier. So I'm trying to just. No, I, I this never is. made an argument from authority. You did that to scientists no, earlier. Don't a lot of just, I'm just mentioning can. the theory itself, not, yeah, not but, any but, but, particular yeah, authority. The theory, yeah, and the theory. The theory itself. itself the theory itself says mm-hmm. that the processes underlying um, the evolution of species are entirely random. Mm-hmm. And if they're random in the sense of the, of, of the sense of that rolling dice are random in that they are the result of physical processes, we don't know um, to a sufficient degree to predict um, the, the outcome, that still, it, still, it still works in that sense that it's random and not yeah. the result of the it's intervention into this world of a su- 
by a supernatural deity. Yeah, but that's the thing. When we're saying random, do we only have one thing in mind whenever we're thinking of that? Random to whom? To us, because that's the only right. people that are really studying this perspective. And right. we don't right. have chinchillas studying evolution, and then they have to determine whether or not if it's random to them. We're only observing it from our perspective. So it's random to us that it's unpredictable. But since we don't have God studying the whole thing, it's not random or unpredictable to him because we if you hold to a the theistic perspective on the view he is the one that's behind the whole thing but it's still random to us which with god not all things are known about him or his work right so it's, it's well it's, again this does not violate i understand what you're saying i understand what you're saying you're saying that it's random to us but it, but god would know the initial condition so if god would know if i roll a dice if I roll a dice, God knows the outcome because he knows the initial conditions and, and such and, and can therefore know the outcome of how I roll the dice. But that's not what the theistic evolution claims. The theistic evolutionist claims that God interferes. He doesn't simply observe. He interferes. And, and a six comes up instead of a one. Because God interfered in that evol in, in that random process in order to achieve His design, and, and in that case, you no longer have a science. Same thing. Okay. Oh Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Beckel. So, when you okay, so let's try to then explain this uh, interfere thing because I'm not, not not sure what you mean by that. So, when you say interfere, do you mean simply that just simply he's behind everything, or that something has been established? But then he decides to change his mind on how, on how something is. Um, well, let's take the simple case of uh, rolling dice. And okay. if um, let's let's say that I want um, um, two sixes to come up mm -hmm. and I, and I shake the dice and the the moment before I let go, God knows the 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 momentum, the rotation, all of the physical um, the, the complete physical description of of the dice and the the, the table that they're going to hit, um, and he knows that it's going to come up uh, six and one, and not two sixes. I want two sixes. God is going to fulfill my request. So God reaches in and he alters the momentum and the physical characteristics uh, of the dice, changes mm -hmm. them in such a way that the six comes up. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. God. And, that's what I mean by interfering. Okay. And if that's, well, that's if not that's, what I would, that's not what I would believe then. As a theistic then you don't evolution. believe in theistic evolution. <laughs> well, according to you, there are various. No, according forms. to logic, because no, theistic there, evolution you know works the same are, way. Yeah. But theistic you know, there are multiple levels and different forms of the theistic evolution. There are very different branches and it's been noted from time whenever theistic evolution became a thing that people had different views there's some similar view that asa gray probably would have shared then even from even a young earth creationist point uh even john calvin was some form of a theistic evolutionist based upon the study that bb warfield had done and bb warfield also was an evolutionist well, you seem that, to think that uh, th this argument from authority works for you i don't think see how it does no, the point i'm mentioning these people is that you're saying seeming to say there has there's only one well that explain uh, it to me. of theistic evolution and those there's multiple the one that i hold to explains that everything that occurs has been predestined and god doesn't need to alter or change things because he's already from the beginning declared the things of the end isaiah 46 10 and so from the beginning, well, then that's the not theistic that evolution. That is, he, he, he didn't interfere. He didn't interfere in, in in the natural processes at all. Where do you get your definition well, of theistic you just evolution? Said, you just said he didn't. You just said he didn't interfere at all. I said he already planned what would happen from the very beginning. Right. So it's not changing. So anything. he didn't interfere at all at any point in our history. He already planned everything, but still also plans the times that if, for example, for re revealing the things to prophets, he has even planned the time that they would meet at a certain place and he would say these things to them. Right. Everything that the universe is completely deterministic and, and yeah. God knew the 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 future location of each and every molecule and atom um in the universe 
before he created it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But again, where do you get your definition for theistic evolution that seems to, as you seem to suggest, uh, contradicts what theistic e the theistic evolution is the belief that God, in some way, uh, reached into the universe and and altered uh, whether he altered the trajectory of of a single atom or 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 to entire um, groups of of atoms he 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 altered the the uh, his the future histories in such a way that um, humans were created and all the species were created right but again my question is where do you get the definition where what standard or what well, what, what what do you say it is what do you say it is no i'm asking you because i you already asked me and i gave you the definition and i've mentioned the sources i was going back to to help define the definition based upon how people had in the early histories viewed it but you seem to say that that's wrong i'm asking you what is your source or citation for how you determine that this is the perfect definition of what theistic evolution is, because you're saying that what I'm holding to isn't theistic evolution. So I want to know, what is your standard? Well, I, I, I would take would theistic think? evolution to be that in some way, um, a, a supernatural deity interfered with the natural process of evolution. Based on what source or citation? Simply based on the two words. Theism, okay, so, theistic, theistic evolution. Evolution okay, so is a natural. Mean, so evolution is a natural process that has mm -hmm. no need for a um, a deity to account for the the origin of species. That's what evolution is. Uh, theism mm -hmm. is the belief that there is a um, a supernatural being who exists in some way outside of our universe, and so putting the two together implies that that deity had some influence or some or altered in some way the natural process of evolution in order to bring about his design uh, for for the universe well if, if that's the case what i'm saying is you know th that that sort of destroys um any kind of scientific inferences because we can't make any inferences okay so just to make sure that i'm clear you are looking at the two words, yeah, and then just making your def own definition based upon the two words that are used to form the specific uh, term itself. Yeah, I, I understand that people have, um, well, it, just theism itself. People have all kinds of uh, different beliefs in a deity. I'm just making it as general as possible. Some kind of supernatural being that exists outside of uh, the universe in some way. Um, mm -hmm. And as far as evolution goes, I, I know exactly what that is. What, that is a perfectly rational process that uses <laughs> random forces and, and can account for the origin of species. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that those two concepts don't go together. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but, but here's the thing. I feel like when you just simply make the definition based upon your own understanding of the two words then and try to then say that is because you did earlier say well it's not because this is what uh theistic evolutionists believe so you try to say that this is what the people that hold to this position affirm when i've already demonstrated that my view of it is quite different um you seem to then at one point start speaking on and representing what certain people's beliefs are and if you don't study from the sources or quote from these same people that hold to the position that you're trying to argue against or even cite saying that this is what the theistic evolutionists believe it would be better to accurately represent them like i wouldn't want to uh misrepresent you by any means uh from any perspective like so there was a guy that uh, uh, was like tell I said, me like, how i'm wrong well like i said earlier there are various different forms of theistic evolution and there are certainly some people that would probably hold to that position, but that's not the only theistic evolution position, and that's not certain, certainly not the majority uh, view, especially from even the liberal um, point of view. That's fine. That there are people that affirm that it's been ordained to happen and that God is still creating to this very day with new things being formed, such as the uh, whenever – I forget what the island is called, but it, has the, but it has a volcano on it, and the rocks that are formed are from the, the lava layers that, you know, you know, once they cool down, they 
start forming the hard layers that are on there. So to this very day, these mountains are still being created by God. So, and it's not. But that's not evolution. Here. That's geology. Right, but I'm saying. Are you the saying, point, are you but, saying yeah, that God I'm is sure. behind? Are you saying that God is behind physical processes like geology too? I'm saying that He is behind everything that exists, that everything has been preordained to occur, and that concerning creation of things, He is behind creation. Well, should we throw virgins into that volcano? Should we throw what? Should we throw virgins into that volcano? Should we throw virgins? I don't see why we yeah, should. Yeah, well, why not? I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously, according to you, the actions of an angry God. So why maybe we maybe if we threw... Virgins? Well, maybe that would appease him if we threw virgins in there. According to where in the Bible does it, would it say... For well, us I don't know. I mean, I mean, according to you, exactly. it, it's, the volcano isn't the result of natural processes. It, it's, a, it's the result of the activity of a God. So it makes sense then maybe maybe to toss a few virgins in and see if see if that helps. Uh, I don't think that's how anything from the theistic point of view of Christianity or even Nothing Old Testament wrong, Judaism man. works. Gee whiz. It, it would have to fit it, well, why have not? To a, you would have to find a biblical oh. concept of where they would have to have made a sacrifice um, via that for humans in the first place. Secondly, we're not saying that the thing itself is like this representation of what god is and therefore you put it in there you that's just what said it was no i did not I said you said that you said that god god is behind this, this some this volcano yeah, coming up and he is he is behind that behind now, yeah. saying, brenda now you're just being that's, dishonest that's, because that's, you, said, you said the same exact thing to me you know full well that's not what we said well what, i don't know what you say what, no, it's you know what we're saying you're just being dishonest right now no, we I'm not i clearly told you that what you're talking about is the pantheist god we, the, you know, you're not going to find any Christian that says that God is a part of his own creation. He sets things forth, right? And then he has a specific programming for, for plants, animals, and even the, you know, the way our body works and the environment works. Well, well Christian ar anarchist okay. just said that, that no, he God was I'm behind everything. God yeah, is behind this volcano. No, he did not. But you're misunderstanding. Yeah, you what That's you exactly what he hold, said. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You deliberately that, but being dishonest, Brenda. As you what I, hold on. He, I said it, but you apparently also then don't understand what that means. Because here's what it means behind the volcano, not he's somewhere inside or literally physically behind the volcano operating from it like he's the wizard from Wizard of Oz. No, he is simply the fact that the volcano exists, God allowed it to exist, and allowed the process that ultimately formed the volcano, of which then it starts doing all these other things, including the eruptions and such the actions of the volcano doesn't represent god whenever it erupts then it's like at the old superstition that well it's an angry god we have to appease the gods and throw the virgins in no the all the things that the volcano does serves a purpose including the creating to add on to the islands of which this volcano is specifically residing in i'm saying that um your your that what you just said is no different than than some Ab ignorant aboriginal who tosses a few ger uh, virgins into a volcano to appease the gods you're, you're no better than they are okay it's clear that if you want to keep misrepresenting positions and not even I, i'm saying it's no better believe, it's, it's no better and that's i can give you an explanation for why it's no better i can give you an explanation for why it's no better i know you think you can but apparently when you're just going to misrepresent certain positions i'm not misrepresenting you, you. Yes, you, yes, are. you are. no yes, i'm not you're doing I mean, it violently. You say, you say that God, the God is behind. No, no, you you are clearly and violently. So the fact, the fact that God is behind this uh, regarding science and theism, uh, and it, that's that's blatantly obvious. It's no, blatant. it's not at all. Yes, um, it is. The yes, fact that is. God hold is hold on. the God is, you, the, and, the, you don't, the, and you don't know what the definition of science is either. Yeah, I do. No, no, you don't. Hold on, no. hold on, okay. hold on, hold on. Don't be that way. That just yet. So look. Just what yet. you're doing right now, what, what you're doing right now is no different than when I hear people saying, uh, well, you believe in evolution, so you believe that today monkeys are still giving birth to humans. That's exactly what you're sounding like to me, is the same kind of people that try to, whenever they, whenever someone explains the position and explains what evolution is, they end up then saying something that has was nowhere close to what was being said, which is something similar to uh, so you believe we 
evolved from monkeys. So then how come monkeys aren't giving birth to humans today? That's exactly what I'm hearing from you. Um, so when you appeal to God to explain a, a, a volcano, mm -hmm. um, you undermine the, the, the very um, scientific method because if God is behind the activity of the volcano, then you can't have any kind of geophysical uh, theories about the about the Earth, because a, an appeal to a supernatural intervention or miraculous intervention by a supernatural deity mm -hmm. um, completely undermines the scientific method, and, and that's why I say that it's no different than um, uh, native beliefs in in super in volcano gods. It, it's just no different. You simply, you've simply taken it back a step, mm -hmm. and you believe there are things such as um, um, magma and things like that below yeah. the surface of the earth, but you, you still think that this magma somehow serves the purpose of, of, of your God. And, mm -hmm. and so you still, have, you still have undermined the scientific method, and your explanation um, it is no better than that of the uh, native explanation. Mm -hmm. right. you've, so simply, you, you've simply taken it back a step. Okay. So do you think that when I'm making these observations and making these claims about that God's, mm -hmm. the whole thing about God behind it and purpose, do you think that I'm getting that simply from uh, making a statement that is con in with natural science or that I'm doing that within a separate uh, science since there's, not, there's more than just simply the natural sciences that exist? Uh, that there's the science of theology, the study of God, which simply that's where the whole issue is that we're drawing. Theology is not a science. Well, it is a science by the term, the fact of theology. And I, like I said, there's more than just simply natural sciences. There's historical sciences, and then there's even sciences for yeah, there's, the study there's of the true. religion itself. But there's only just the scientific method. And um, so then, so the so, college so what you're taught saying, the scientific method has been lying to me because this is actually what I've heard in a uh, secular well, uh, college. Um, theology is not a science because it does not make use of the scientific method at all. Um, and when you say that, does, does history then use the scientific method? It makes use of the scientific method, but history Where? itself is not actually a science. Okay, then what is the standard? Because you said that theology is not because it doesn't use the scientific method. Well, history right. is a science, but it doesn't use the scientific method. What is the standard then? By the well, way? I don't know if history is a, is technically a science, or, or I think history is part I of the is is a humanistic I, side is is on the humanistic side of of the of academia, not on the scientific side. I've been in college. I've studied in history, and it has been declared a science when I was okay. In okay. It's just simply the, the science and the studying of the past. That's what it's okay. seen as. It doesn't seem, mean the same thing as the natural sciences, though. That, we that doesn't help you out. Any, that doesn't help you any, because if history is the study, is the scientific study of the past, then again, if God interferes in his, human history, then that completely undermines uh, um, history. You can't have a scientific study of history if God is interfering in history. I don't see how this conversation is going to proceed well, any further. We, we, we basically gone in circles. Don't you understand that, that you can't have a rational scientific investigation of the past if there is a supernatural deity, uh, Christian or otherwise, who interferes in the past, because then you no longer have um, an explanation. Well, the scientists that have studied this, that hold to that perspective, including the guy that made the scientific method in the first place, who was a Christian that held to God this didn't make the scientific method, method people. Did. No, God didn't make the scientific me method. As far as I'm concerned, it was a Christian, though, that made the scientific method. Uh, I don't method. care if it was. Yeah, a Christian, uh, that doesn't make any difference. So it was it was people. It was people. Yeah, so he's able to use the scientific method as well as invent it to examine it and still hold to the worldview that you claim. Well, that's just an argument from authority. You're saying because he believed that they are compatible, therefore they're compatible. That that's just me. That's just an argument so, from authority. So, so is all of their scientific work then nullified? 
because no. all of those discoveries have been based upon not just simply their examinations, but as some of them would even cite, that the main driving point that fueled them to look at these discoveries was their belief in God. That's but that's just their belief. That's just so the their human belief. Human. Exactly. The method, the method is not put it their yes. beliefs in the scientific papers, but they still see that worldview in mind. That's fine. But their explanations don't require any kind, any belief in God. In fact, putting God into the explanations destroys any possibility of scientific explanation at yeah, all. They're not trying to do natural science with theology and the discoveries. They simply cite what we see in the natural world. What you have right. a philosophical framework is then the other step. Rather you so hold to those it from the atheistic perspective or the theistic perspective. So those explanations have no need of any supernatural deity at all. They are complete and sufficient to themselves. You don't need God to explain gravity. Gravity explains itself by itself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But still, if one wants to also look further into it, then one person can go to the issue about the philosophical point of view, the religious aspect of it, or whichever point you want to take that investigates well, this further. Because those are tacked up on. Those are those are additional beliefs that people have. But, yeah, but the theory itself, the, the theory itself, does not philosophy. require a belief in a god. Right, but it's still also part of a common concept of philosophy that though we make observations, then we must also ask questions at some point, and that's where philosophy comes in when we start asking the questions, trying to investigate that either by trying to continue more into this natural scientific process method or that we go straight further more into philosophy at that point. Well, my point for the last hour or so has been that um, evolution as an explanation of the origin of species mm -hmm. um, cannot um, contradicts um, theistic explanations of of the origins of species, and, and in and in the ensuing conversation, people have made additional claims that um, also that undermine the very process of, of science. The scientific method uh, depends upon um, a uniformity of nature mm -hmm. that is independent of any deity, Christian or non-Christian. And if if there is a deity that interferes, then it upsets that uniformity, and we can no longer rely on our inferences made from observations because those observations could simply be wrong. If okay, if I roll good. if I roll a dice, and and the moment before I release the dice. I have a super sophisticated machine that uses lasers and calculates the trajectory of each and every dice. And I say, it's going to roll. It's going to come up two sixes. Mm -hmm. but then God puts his finger in there and alters one of them. And so the one of them comes up, not two sixes, but a one. Well, then I can no longer have any kind of uh, scientific explanation for any um, scientific endeavor because I can't, I can't know whether or not God is interfering in any experiment that I conduct. So I can no longer, my inferences, my inferences are no longer valid. Okay. That's, that's, that's the whole point. If God interferes in, 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 in the scientific study of history, in, in evolution, or in the, um, in, in the geology of volcanoes, if God is interfering, then you can no longer have inferences based on observations mm -hmm. okay and you so, no longer have a science all right so three things one of course i obviously as i've stated plenty of times earlier i've already disagreed with you on that number two uh again you focus well, on what is your what if, 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 you let me finish what's, please but, but, but the, you're gonna the, pile the, things on so so you don't agree just with like what you I did just earlier said. Yeah, you, you, you piled things on earlier, so no. if you're going to make lengthy res uh, responses, at least also allow me to do the same thing. Um, so secondly, 
like I said earlier, I'm not also in agreement with the issue that it simply <laughs> interferes. That in the since the beginning, things have been declared at the end. Isaiah forty six ten, and thirdly, this would not contradict what we would believe uh, concerning even the Christianity or the Bible, because as I've made a clear statement involving uh, a debate with G-Man on the issue, is that there are verses within Genesis 1 that seem to read evolutionary when it comes to the concept. Genesis chapter 1, starting in uh, verse 11, it says, God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind. And verse 12 says that the earth brought forth the grass. And that's not the well, only that, case. You're contradicting yourself. Hold on, hold on. Verse 20 then also says, let the waters uh, abound with the abundance of living creatures and let birds fly yeah. above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. And then verse 24 says, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping things. So the clear thing here is it's saying, let the waters and let the earth bring forth these things. And it shows that a divine command has been given in which whenever God speaks within this command, Things will always happen, as it says in the that uh, God speaks the word and the word becomes. So when we see this of the waters and the earth, it shows God is behind the, at least from the theistic evolutionist point, that God is behind what seems like the natural process of simply the earth bringing forth these things. But they wouldn't have started if God didn't give out that divine command that began well, the process. If God commanded it, then it wasn't devolution. That's the whole according, point. According, it, to, it, Brenda, is, according is, to Brenda. Yeah, that's what evolution to, is. According, according to who? According to, according to the theory of evolution. And no. who, according to the theory of evolution, which was discovered and written by who? Um, a Darwin. A, well, it, actually, uh, you can trace back the theory of evolution back to the Greeks, in, in certain parts, but Darwin is is considered most responsible because he really so fully fleshed right. out uh, natural selection. But there's right, elements the by natural selection. So, but yeah. I, but here's another thing that I just noticed: you hated me going to the peeling the authority of different people. You just said Darwin, and then eventually for the pre-Darwinian right. things, the Greeks. Right. So, aren't you appealing to authority at the same no. time by saying that yes, that it's not evolution? No, I'm not. You said it's not evolution because the theory of evolution that was written by Darwin. I'm just telling you what the history and the theory actually is. The right, history the of the theory was, and then the theory itself. Yeah, but the but theory, the theory was still proposed by an individual who well, so studied what? the issue. So that's it's, still an appeal to authority at that point no, it's by not. standard. Yes, appeal it to is. authority. An appeal to authority is when the truth of your claim is is you cite an authority to the truth of your claim right evolution isn't true because uh, because darwin um came up with the, the idea with the theory mm -hmm. right. evolution is true because we have um uh conducted enough experiments in order to understand it and we wow. wait a minute wait 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 see now you see the contradiction that that's coming out of your mouth right now See, this is exactly what we're saying with the issue of God is that God sets these things in motion. We're not we're not talking deism here. We're saying that God has pro pre programmed all, all these things within his creation and and these things yeah. are continuing on as he as he designed them to do so. But well, as as that, that's, not that's, that's not evolution. That's not evolution. That's my point. That's not evolution. MK said it and as C A has said it. That we as finite human beings are observing these things in the way that God has designed them, and we're and we're looking at those actions and those those attributes, and and we and through those things we're we're practicing science. That is science. That's not science. That's not science. It is science. No, it isn't. I gave you're you, saying I gave that you, God designed these things. I gave you the definition. No, the the problem is, uh, Brenda, you just want to hijack just for the sake of of being an arguer uh, and being contrarian. Um, you just want to just deny the the fact that this is the definition of science, and What's which the definition science? of science. Uh, okay, so it's, so it doesn't want to go to God. Let me just point this out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a, there's actually a if you want to go to evolution on this, then how about let's go to convergence evolution. There's a scientist named Simon Conway Morris that has done studies and experiments on this particular point, and what he has tried to do is basically show 
from science, from the observations, that whenever Stephen Jay Gould once mentioned in a, I forget which book he wrote, that if you if we were to start evolution over again, then the the outcomes of going back through all the evolution would change with different results and different features. Uh, Simon Conway Morris managed to demonstrate from observations that this is simply not the case, that we would most likely just get everything back to the way it was. And the basis of this off of the fact that when the things have evolved, they're even from different uh, species or different, even uh, what I try and remember what they would identify as a kind uh, whenever you hear the whole right comfort thing, but they were those kinds, they have the same sort of uh, features for, say, like the type of eyes or the type of uh, walking abilities, such as either four legs or two legs or anything that they share in that specific thing that helps connect everything back to uh, one common ancestor down the whole huge line, and that they still manage to keep these, especially in the said pre certain conditions of which they're needed to survive, that right. that, that, so, that there's simply not just simply that everything would be different. <laughs> it, it would all come out the same way if you go from the very beginning of time itself and then begin evolution all over again. He would basically say that based on these observations that we're seeing from the uh, similar patterns that we're seeing that come up from the evolutionary process of different features and traits that are added or... Uh, you know, being added on upon that these things show that we're going to basically get the same results if we start from square one again. Yeah, I, I don't see how that helps you any. Uh, convergent evolution simply means that uh, different species can come up with uh, similar solutions to uh, the problem of how to survive in a given environment. So given the fact that we have th that in, in our universe, we have light waves and, and and given the, the facts of our material universe, something like mm -hmm. uh, an eye, which has, you know, like a lens mm -hmm. and, and, and a retina on which the image uh, falls on and is detected by uh, special cells that, that can detect um, certain wavelengths of light and, and stuff like that. Given, given the, the natural world we live in, um, and, and given the, the huge benefit that being able to see uh, a predator coming coming up to you wanting to eat you gives that that you would have convergent evolution um, coming up with similar solutions to the same problem you know uh, the same to do with wings for instance you're gonna have uh, a if you're gonna if you're a uh, multi, if you're a relatively large sized enough uh, animal, whether you're a bat or a bird, you need wings that have a curved surface so that you can get some kind of uplift um, from basic physical processes, and you're going to get something like a wing. So on another, on another planet, you can have little animals there, and if they have, if, if they evolve wings, those wings are going to look like wings because we live in the same physical universe. They're going to have eyes that more or less work like our eyes because we live in the same physical universe. Um, so I don't see how that helps you any because what I'm saying is that once you have a deity that interferes with and creates species um, on command, then you no longer have science because you cannot make the inferences um, needed for science because uh, God could be um, interfering in any in any situation and and so your observations are no longer are no longer valid you can no longer trust that your observations um are are do that, now. that the regular that the regularities that the regularities and consistencies that we observe are trustworthy because they could just as easily be the consequence of the interference of a deity so you can, no just can't all. have science you just can't so have stupid. science if well, there is miraculous intervention by any deity in the so natural stupid. world. That is so utterly I, I, Hold on, hold on, Beckel. Uh, yeah, I don't, again, it's just simply... It's a general some, philosophical point. It's, so, it's not no, a physical no, it's not. Right, but it's a philosophical it's point that according to your own philosophical that, that is framework, so whereas even from other atheists, 
that are st- that have done, made this observations, well, then even I, they themselves would disagree. So I, I would invite, saying that you're I would invite them to friend. come in. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just utterly stupid. It's an utterly stupid argument. We, we're not talking about we're not talking about the the proof of of the existence of God. We're talking about the things that exist and that that we that we can see and touch, feel, and stuff like that. That we that we can no. uh, sense with our senses here. Um, I, so, I understand. I'm 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 accepting your promises. I, I'm Sorry, accepting your premises. I'm not disputing them. The second definition right here, systematic knowledge of the physical or material world gained through what? Observation and experience. Observation now, and experience. Now, wait, yes. now wait, wait just a second here. I agree if with God, that. If God created something and he has designed it so that over a period of time it does such and such and such, whatever it is, right? And we as finite creatures... We can't see God. We can only see what he does to the universe and to the environment. We can still look at these things that are being performed in front of us through our eyes in a, in a, in a, in a temporal sense and observe uh, so far what's been revealed to us, how these things work. That in but and you of can't. itself, That's my whole that, point. In, wait, that in and of itself is science. Yes, and my whole point is that you can't do that. You don't. You're not but justified. You that. That's you're not the justified. Your in, in That's the, the with your argument. Based. You're, you're not just the part before the horse. No, I'm not. You're not you justified are. in drawing the inference. No, no. You, based you're on your observations, that there are these that natural selection is at work. You're not asking us for the existence of God or whether or not these things that he created, he's a part of these things. We're just simply, simply, simply talking about the process called science. That's there all is no such about. process if sure there, there is, is a God who Some interferes. the greatest scientists were, were theists. All right, hold on, hold on. That's so just so an appeal so to authority. That. I it's not an appeal how, to how, Hold on, how, how is it not science? If a God exists, because because we're making observations, we're able to see something and say, "Huh, this is what we see. This is what yes. we're looking at." Yes, we make and observations. No, that part, hold that on. part, I do, just just to be clear, that's that how part I don't disagree with. We are able to make observations. Yes, that's science. Right, but but how is then it not science if a God exists, regardless of whether you believe or not? Um, it's not science if that deity interferes with our observations oh, that's so ridiculous. I'm, I'm asking how that's what i'm asking regardless because of then we're no longer this or not because then we no longer have rational justification for the inferences we make based on those if those observations that's how stupid. so hold on how so because um the 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 conclu- the inferences we draw mm. uh, appeal to natural forces but Infer- if god is interfering then that inference is false I therefore, find that therefore, okay. that undermines our inferences that we make oh okay define that define natural forces then um a natural force is a force that acts um i guess under under certain conditions according to um certain mathematical descriptions <laughs> and and has no so, has no appeal to any kind of supernatural deity so so mathematical so, descriptions. So, so evolution works by natural selection. Natural selection is simply the uh, random. It 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 needs uh, uh, random processes, uh, random events to at work mm-hmm. that cause that cause some uh, animals to survive and other animals um, to to die based based on their environment and that mm-hmm. that. That process of dying or not or surviving based on your environment, we call natural selection, and that this is all we need to account for the origin of species. We don't need a deity to account for species. But if a deity is secretly behind the scenes, you know, um, pushing, uh, fudging, fudging the, the results. If he's fudging the results then our inferences are wrong. There's another assertion there. Okay, all right. That's well, not an assertion, that's okay. a deduction. Okay, okay. hold on. Yeah. That's, one, that. that's, okay. that's one perspective on evolution. What that about is people... evolution. Right, but you, no, you said something about those who are holding it to a theistic perspective that God's fudging the results, that he interferes, which that seems to be the main well, that's thing. That's what you argument. said. 
No, it's not. I told you. You twice you you what my you view quoted is. the Bible saying that the that the land uh, gave forth to the animals on God's command. Yes, and and also I quoted Isaiah chapter forty six verse ten that God declares from the beginning the end. Yeah. That these so things does, does have God, been predestined did, from the beginning to occur, not having any form did God, of does God, interference. Does God interfere in, into our universe? Has God ever uh, interfered into the physical world since its creation? Uh, Brenda, can you... Hold on. Defi define interfere again because, you, sa because you said one definition that I think is now changed for this conversation. Yep. Okay, Brenda, real quick. Uh, can you make your final point, Brenda, please? And then I'll bring in Tom Tom. Oh, geez. I had myself muted. Okay. Um, has... I, I don't know. Uh, I didn't realize I was muted, so I don't know how much of what I said was, was went missing. So That's if God, if God has has not interfered in the natural order that is he has not put his finger on the scales he has never altered the 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 outcome of physical processes at any time that's the deistic god um the theistic god says that god intervenes in history in human history and theistic evolution says that god intervenes in the history of of biological evolution and so if God interferes, then we are no longer allowed our, to infer what we do based on our observations because those observations are wrong. I think we have to have a more sophisticated grasp of what it means to say God is the creator. And part of what the new atheists have succeeded in doing is setting the frame of, of the debate that, that the new atheists say that you, you can only have God if you can tell us kind of something that God is doing. So if, if God's not making the planets go in their orbits or not gathering together the molecules to make the first life form or not making human beings bipedal, then, then if God's not doing those things, then there's nothing for him to do. Therefore, he doesn't get to exist. You don't get to believe in God unless you can explain to me what it is that he's doing. Well. I mean, that, that's a very reductionistic view of God. I mean, God has to exist in the same way that the second law of thermodynamics exists, and that's the only kind of status that they're willing to concede. But the, the, the Christian understanding uh, of God has, has always been, uh, certainly at its best, uh, a much more robust and philosophically deep concept than that. And we understand that God works through secondary causes. So we have to get have a more uh, sophisticated view of, of causality. I mean, what would it mean to say that God brings a whole universe into existence and endows it with, with orderly pattern physical laws and a mathematical structure that, that uh, allows things to form that are stable and can persist indefinitely like solar systems and galaxies and so on. What does it mean to say that God brought a, a world like that into existence? Well, uh, I mean, it doesn't mean that God's in there all the time tinkering like gravity is always tinkering. It means that God is, is kind of behind and under it in, in ways that are not going to show up like gravity does, but yet are uh, more significant than gravity because that's where gravity is grounded. Gravity is grounded in the, in the originate, originating power of God as, as creator. But way before the Big Bang or any theory of, of evolution, Aquinas is pointing out that that origination is not the key uh, part of the doctrine of creation. It's sustaining. So when we, when we say that God is a creator, we, we have to be careful that we don't get bewitched by our language so that we, we treat God like a human creator. When a human creator does something, they uh, create it and then they walk away. I mean, we don't say that, that da Vinci continues to sustain the Mona Lisa, and if he would remove his sustaining power, it would cease to exist. I mean, that would make no sense at all, but yet that's what it means to say God is, is the creator of this world, that everything is grounded in, in his being. One of the questions about evolution is what do you mean by the word evolution? And the problem is that the word means many different things to different people. Evolution can mean we see that over time, a long time ago, objects were more simple biological things, and then over time, more complicated things like ourselves emerged. That's kind of natural history. 
with evolution as a mechanism, it says you have mutations, you have selection, and these mechanisms together generate that complexity. And you have evolution as a kind of a worldview. You know, George Gaylord Simpson, man is a product of a, of a process which did not have him in mind. He was not planned. Those are theological statements that are put on top of evolution. The problem for the average Christian is that they want to attack, and I think rightly so, evolution number three, the worldview. But instead of saying, you know, the science, the natural history, and even the mechanism of evolution doesn't, has, doesn't actually imply that, that philosophy, they try to attack all three at once. And the difficulties for Christians in interpreting the evolutionary story in scripture has to do with natural history, has to do with the idea that the world is old. Is the world old or is the world young? That's really where the, the Bible stands. Or stands. That's where some people feel the Bible and science have some friction. I think that that's not necessary. That's where inter important interpretive work has to happen. I also think that if we look at, um, and this is something that Francis Collins and others have written about more eloquently than me, if you look at the, the genes in your own body, you see, you see remnants of that natural history. You see remnants of that common ancestor we had with the chimpanzee. Those are there. And they look like they came about by some kind of stochastic process, some process that used an evolutionary mechanism. Maybe we haven't listed all the evolutionary mechanisms yet. Maybe there's more beautiful ones that are coming. But the fact that this happened seems very, very strong. So what is the scientific process of evolution? It begins with microevolution, the adaptation of species through random variation and reproductive success. The basic idea is that organisms have a range of characteristics. Those individuals with characteristics better suited to the environment will tend to survive and produce more offspring, leading to an increase in that characteristic in future generations. In this way, some bacteria have developed a resistance to antibiotics. Consider bears. If a population of bears has a range of fur color, the bears with the whiter fur will be better able to survive in a snowy climate and produce more offspring. Those with brown fur will be better able to survive in a forest area. This leads to separate subspecies, polar bears and grizzly bears. Just as God uses a mixture of randomness and order in physics to create many unique snowflakes, so God uses both randomness and order in biology to create new unique species. All of us will have to come to terms with this evidence. For me, when I first learned about it, it shook me up. This wasn't how I was used to thinking about God creating. I had pictured God walking in the garden, creating each bird and flower in a separate miracle. But it helped me to remember that a scientific explanation does not replace God. The theory of evolution does not replace God. I learned to see how God could be using this system to create a system of randomness and order, of adaptation and survival, to create an extravagant variety of birds and flowers of every color and shape, with God sustaining the entire process. I can now see Genesis as teaching who created everything, and the theory of evolution as describing how God created. This was God's design from the beginning.